Hello all. Welcome to our new video, on Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard. In this video we will understand the 12 requirements of the standard. Let's get started. Any merchant or service provider that stores, processes, or transmits cardholder data, is required to comply with the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard. The standard specifies 12 requirements, which are organized into six control objectives, relating to the storage, transmission, and processing of cardholder data. Developed and maintained by the Payment Card Industry Security Standards Council, the requirements apply to all system components, included in or connected to the cardholder data environment, that is the people, processes, and technologies that store, process, or transmit cardholder data, or sensitive authentication data. Please note, failure to meet the 12 requirements could mean, a fine or the termination of credit card processing privileges. Let's understand the 12 requirements. The first requirement is, to protect your system with firewalls. This is important because firewalls control the transmission of data between an organization's trusted internal networks, and untrusted external networks, as well as traffic between sensitive areas of the internal networks themselves. The second requirement is to configure passwords and settings. The default settings of many commonly used systems are well known, easily exploitable and often used by criminal hackers to compromise those systems. Vendor supplied default settings must be changed, and unnecessary default accounts disabled, or removed before any system is installed on the network. The third requirement is to protect stored cardholder data. The storage of cardholder data should be kept to a minimum and appropriate data retention and disposal policies, procedures and processes should be implemented. Certain data, such as the full contents of the chip or magnetic strip, the CVN or the PIN, should never be stored. When data is stored, it should be stored securely. The fourth requirement is to encrypt transmission of cardholder data across open, public networks. One should ensure that strong cryptography and security protocols should be used, to safeguard sensitive cardholder data during transmission over open, public networks. The fifth requirement is to use and regularly update antivirus software. Antivirus software capable of detecting, removing, and protecting against all known types of malware must be used on all systems to protect them from threats. And it should be updated regularly. The sixth requirement is to regularly update and patch systems. Many security vulnerabilities are fixed by patches issued by software vendors. Organizations should establish a process to identify security vulnerabilities, and rank them according to their level of risk. Relevant security patches should be installed within a month of their release, to protect against cardholder data compromise. The seventh requirement is to restrict access to cardholder data by business need to know. Documented systems and processes should be put in place to limit access rights to critical data. Access control systems should deny all access by default, and access should be granted on a need to know basis, and according to the clearly defined job responsibilities of authorized personnel. The eighth requirement is to assign a unique ID to each person with computer access. The ability to identify individual users not only ensures that system access is limited to those with the proper authorization, it also establishes an audit trail that can be analyzed following an incident. All users must be assigned a unique ID, which must be managed according to specific guidelines. Controlled user authentication management should also be implemented. Two-factor authentication must be used for remote network access. The ninth requirement is to restrict physical access to cardholder data. Electronic data breaches are not the only source of data loss. Physical access to systems should also be limited, and monitored using appropriate controls. Procedures should be implemented to distinguish between on-site personnel and visitors, and physical access to sensitive areas. Media should be destroyed in specific ways when no longer required. 
The tenth requirement is to track and monitor all access to network resources and cardholder data. Secure, controlled audit trails must therefore be implemented that link all access to system components with individual users and log their actions. An audit trail history should be retained for at least a year, with a minimum of three months logs immediately available for analysis. Logs and security events should be regularly reviewed, to identify anomalous or suspicious activity. The eleventh requirement is to regularly test security systems and processes. New vulnerabilities are regularly found and exploited, so it is essential that system components, processes and custom software are regularly tested. Documented processes must be implemented to detect and identify all unauthorized wireless access points on a quarterly basis. Internal and external network vulnerability scans must be performed by qualified personnel at least quarterly. The twelfth and last requirement is to maintain a policy that addresses information security. To comply with the PCI standard, organizations must establish, publish, maintain, and disseminate a security policy which must be reviewed at least annually, and updated according to the changing risk environment. A risk assessment process must be implemented to identify threats and vulnerabilities. A usage policy for critical technologies must be developed. Organizations must also implement an incident response plan, so that they can respond immediately to any system breach. I hope the content was useful. Here is a summary and categorization of all 12 requirements. You can take a screenshot for ready reference in the future. Please subscribe to the channel to stay on top of all the upcoming videos. Thank you.